Oh, so wonderful is He. Oh, wonderful is He. Praise Him ever, wonderful is He. Savior leading us to realms of glory, singing as we go, story. making known the love that made us free, that made us free forever. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the September 1965 issue of World Harvest Magazine which is what we're going to be looking at this week. And this is it right here. Now, in this issue, it has a little bit of a different tone than some of the others. Um, he talks a lot about people's fears at that time, where there was a lot of talk about World War III and things like that, which, of course, didn't happen, fortunately. But this was uh, during the Vietnamese War in 1965, and on the cover of this issue, he's got a picture of downtown New York, and there's a stanza on the front cover, and I'm not sure what this is from, but he wrote this. It's not necessarily a poem, because it doesn't rhyme, but it's called The Cry of a Native Son, and I'm gonna read, I'm going to read it here. It says, America, I love you. I am a son of your native soil. I am most at home in your big cities. I have drunk deeply of your freedoms. I have enjoyed your abundance. But America, can you not see the handwriting on the wall? Your enemies are deadly within and without. You have poisonous vipers posing as your friends. They are ready for a fatal thrust. America, you bear the hatred of many lands. I have heard you cursed in foreign tongues. I have seen you misunderstood by men and nations. You are unloved and unwanted in a world of peril and need. America, worst of all, you are sick inside. I see your newsstands filled with pornographic reading. I see your clothes styled by sex deviates. I see your lust for pleasure like a Roman delight. America, I see you worshiping the golden calf of material greed. You need Christ now. You need his love, his delivering power, America, and may not be too late for you to find God now. God save America, land that I love. Lester Sumrall. Uh, this really rings true today, doesn't it? Uh, I look at it as almost being prophetic in nature. Because this is so much more true now than what it ever was back then. But this just kind of shows you uh, God's time compared to our time. This was almost 60 years ago. And things are still heading in that same direction, deteriorating, aren't they? On the inside of the front cover, there's a little article called Age of Anxiety by Brother Sumrall here. And in this, he's talking about the same thing here. He's talking about uh, what's going on in the world. He says, we're in a time of rebellion. The world is restless with discontent. We live in shadows. Our stomachs jump when an announcer says, we interrupt this program for a news bulletin. <laughs> yeah. This was during the Cold War also. But we're still in this same situation in our country today. Now, what it says about the front cover here, it says, it calls it a soliloquy, which he had on the cover there. The cry of a native son. And it says, this touching solilo soliloquy written by Lester Sumrall 24 hours after his return from overseas, expresses the heart concern of a native son for his beloved country. Yeah. Then there's uh, some photos from overseas here. Missionary evangelism in action. And it shows Brother Sumrall uh, with a couple servicemen here. It shows him praying for several different people. And then the main feature in the magazine this month was an article called Night in Tondo. And actually, he talked about it in last month's issue. He kind of uh, 
put a little precursor in there to say, look for this article in next month's issue. Tondo is an area of the Philippines that is crime ridden. It's kind of like a ghetto. It's an area where a lot of criminals gravitate there to hide. And it's very low income and it's quite dangerous. And there's no churches at all in that area. At least there wasn't back then. And Brother Summerall decided to go into that area to evangelize. And it was really quite dangerous. And he went with his wife and some other people. And it's just a fascinating article. He really gets in depth about the things that he saw in this Philippine ghetto. And the conditions that he was traveling in. And how... He sat up there on a basketball court, actually, and preached to a lot of people. A lot of people were drawn to it. And his wife, I guess, uh, played the accordion. He took some singers with him. <laughs> it's really a great story. And then, right after the Night in Tondo feature article in this magazine, there's another article about the same thing. And it's written by his wife. Sister Louise Sumrall, who was with him. And like I said, she took her accordion with her into this uh, this crime-ridden area of the Philippines. And it's just her side of the story there. There's quite a few different items in this magazine. There's a small article here on page 7 called, Are We Beyond the Possibility of Shock? And this was written by missionary Fred Jarvis. I'm not sure who that was, but he talks about the same topics here that Brother Summerall is talking about, about the state of our society and everything. Then in the center of the magazine on page 8 and 9, it says, Lester Summerall reports, it's harvest time in the Philippines. And this article here, he just talks about the things that are going on over there. Uh, with the evangelism efforts and everything that's going on with the over there with the church and the and the ministries that they're doing, then there's an interesting little feature here on page ten by a gentleman named Frank Robertson, and he tells about a trip he went on with Brother Sumrall to the Holy Land and about him getting saved in the upper room there. He went on this trip, he says, with his wife. And he wasn't saved at the time, and he just went on the tour to go on the tour. He thought it would be interesting, you know? <laughs> and they went into the upper room, and he tells about this experience that he had there in the upper room in Jerusalem. And he got saved there. And he's got a few different uh, advertisements in here. He's got an advertisement for the book Command Performance. And if you haven't downloaded that and read it yet, it is available in last month's issue, in the July-August issue. There's a PDF link there in the description underneath that video for the download of that entire book, Command Performance. It's a very rare book. It's not available anywhere. And then he's got a an ad for the Bitten by Devils crusade that he's going on. He's going on a crusade of the United States here. It doesn't say the cities he's going to be in, but it says that it's a series of three-day crusades. So what he'll do he'll, in each area, he preaches for three nights there, and it says on the third night of each crusade, they play the film Bitten by Devils. Now, this one's a little bit different, too, in that on the very back cover, there's an article called Bluntly Speaking. And in this short article here, he talks about different statistics, things that are going on in the world. One statement he puts here when he's talking about the statistics here, he says, illegitimacy has increased 300%. Now, you don't hear that too much anymore. Now, for those of you that don't know, somebody that's illegitimate is a person who is born out of wedlock. Isn't that something? And just think of how many there are today. There's probably more illegitimate people, children, that are born out of wedlock than there are that are born where both parents are married. Isn't that something? 
We've seen a great downward spiral in the morals in this country, but he says that says there that illegitimacy has increased 300% back at that time. But now it's to the point where that term isn't even used anymore. I guess that would be, uh, it would be offensive, I guess, to use that term, to say that somebody was illegitimate because their parents weren't married. Isn't that something? But that was a regular term that you heard back then. But enjoy, and there is a PDF download of this entire magazine in the description box underneath this video. Uh, I found this issue actually quite eye-opening, and it was almost as if I was reading today's newspaper. <laughs> so it really is a little bit prophetic in nature, I do believe. But let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together with my friends. I ask that these resources would bless your people, would encourage them, and would, that would uh, give them different ideas for new, new endeavors and new ministries and, and new ways to spread the gospel. Lord, I thank you for it. Praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. I love you all, and I'll see you the next time around. Bye-bye. Glory, oh, so wonderful, it's you, so sweet, so wonderful, it's praise and never wonderful, it's free. Leading us to realms of glory, singing as we fall, making known the love that made us free, that made us free forever.